Thanks for clicking the link, and welcome to the first episode of my bad guy series. I'm the bad guy. Now, Wire fans, don't worry. I'll still be doing the Wire content like usual. I'm done with this gangster shit. With Halloween around the corner, I wanted to switch it up a little. Over the next couple weeks, I'm going to be highlighting some of the most iconic... Say hello to my little friend! Most chilling... And here we go. Most terrifying villains in movie and TV history. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? With this being the first video, we wanted to highlight one of the most grounded and original villains in movie history. Roland Bishop, Tupac Shakur. You my fucking problem. From the 1992 gritty classic Juice, directed by Ernest Dickinson, Tupac Shakur embodied the shit out this character. I can't differentiate the two at times. Every time I see Bishop, I see this. Hey, have a good summer. <laughs> they let us know early Bishop's upbringing wasn't the easiest. A troubled teen, pops in and out of prison. Take it easy, pop. Beef with rival gangs. I didn't tell him shit. You got it wrong. Now watching the movie, you knew Bishop was a little off from the first couple scenes. Bishop had a chip on his shoulder so big that you know got him into some shit from time to time. But let me be honest, I can understand having a chip on his shoulder somewhat. New York City 31 years ago, right at the tail end of the crack era, those New York streets were difficult to navigate through, especially as a teenager. But what made Bishop's scenario a little different is he had a crew. Q, Raheem, and of course Steel. It's good to see the youngster beat that addiction, by the way. You smoke crack, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Now, what makes Bishop's character stand out, what made this shit so original and authentic, is how quickly he turned on his boys, his brothers even. You are brothers. Now, f that. We used to be like brothers. Bishop had that energy that if your ass wasn't with him, then you were against him, his crew included. What's up? There's three or four scenes and moments I want to highlight with y'all that made Roland Bishop one of my personal favorites growing up. I don't give a f Before we get into it, like always, I'm Big Rich. Thanks so much for clicking the link. I appreciate every single one of y'all. If this is your type of shit, make sure you hit that red button and make sure you get in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. I got to hit y'all with the scene that started it all. Bumping in the blizzard put the chip in Bishop's back. Yeah, pardon me for a second. I'm about to rob this place. All right, everybody, put your hands in the air and face the f***ing bar. The crew had a chance to help Blizzard rob the bar, but they didn't do it. Hey, yo, Q, you want a piece of this? Nah, man, I'm all right. All right, everybody. <laughs> you can tell this shit didn't sit well with Bishop. Man, you know how much money is in there? It's the second day. We are in there, man. Let's just go. I said no, man. Chilling at Steel's. They see on the news that Blizzard was shot and killed in an attempt robbery. Oh shit, it's Blizzard! A gunman was killed in a shootout with police as he attempted to rob the Harlemwood Bar in Harlem just under an hour ago. Pac spazzes out because he believes the outcome would have been different if the crew would have been there to hold Blizzard down. When in all actuality, Q was right. If we was there, we was there, it'd be five niggas instead of one! I believe seeing this scene actually put the chip in Raheem's back as well. Because he's actually the one that bought the gun, bought the burner. Got it? Yeah, I got it. Come on, let's walk. What's going on? What's what right, about, man? Just imagine how different of a movie this would be if Raheem showed some sense and then let Bishop hang on to the burner. Why should he hold on to the gun? Because I already got it, mother... Raheem had to know there was something off with his boy as well. So to let him leave with it, just show the carelessness on Raheem's part. He has to hold some of that L, y'all. Yo, be careful with that, man. It's loaded. Moving on to number three. Gotta hit y'all with an obvious one. These next chain of events were so surprising the first time I saw this, there was no way I could leave it off the list. This man right here showed us exactly who Rolling Bishop was. They convinced Q to leave his DJ in competition in between sets. Real shit, the whole place is ecstatic, except his boys. Standing here looking like a bunch of haters. The most diabolical haters this side of the Mississippi. Now I'm sure Q leaving this spot, he had no idea he was about to be an accessory to murder 
Not only once, but twice. Is everybody ready? Bishop? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now they run in the store and everything's going as planned. Come on, crazy. Go. Come on, go. Take, take everything you want. Shut the f up. The old man's give him no issues. They got the money and it's time for them to dip. And Bishop loses his shit and executes old man Quill. This shit right here was insane in its own right. Cause he had no reason to do what he just did. The crew realizes they need to get rid of the gun. Which is the smart thing. They just committed murder. But Bishop ain't hearing none of that shit. I need a gun. I mean, I'm holding on to this till I say so. Then Bishop does the unthinkable. I remember being a teen watching this shit and jumping out my seat in disbelief. This shit was dark. Thinking it couldn't get any worse, this man literally pauses, comes back, and digs in his man's pockets for the little bit of grocery money they just stole. Oh man, I need y'all in the comment section. The first time y'all saw this, what was your thoughts? Number two, I wanted to take a different approach and instead of looking at one scene, I wanted to highlight Bishop's mannerisms, his arrogance, how unfazed he was by killing. I mean, you would have thought this brother's been doing this shit his whole life. His actions and the way he approached situations, this shit just screams sociopath. <laughs> the way the character was unfazed. I mean, look at the interrogation with the cops. Calm, cool, and collected. No, I went to the basement for a little while. To the basement. What for? I ran into an old girlfriend. So what, what were you doing down in the basement? Also the lying. I mean, it was smart and dirty at the same time, trying to pin the murders on his rival, Radamez. It's the idea telling the cops. I killed Raheem. The cops wasn't buying that shit. He also lied to Samuel. Shout out to Samuel Jackson for being in every iconic movie of my childhood. Who the f is this asshole? But he tried lying to him as well, putting the bodies on cue. Come on, Trip, you know me since I was a kid. I've known a lot of killers since they was kids. Homie right here knew something was up. Now, as egregious as those moments were, nothing, and I mean nothing, tops the disrespect of attending Raheem's wake. I understand keeping up appearances. I understand not wanting to go to jail. Now you see now, you know what's up in that don't you? But God damn, bro, certain moves cross the line. Habitually, he's a habitual line stepper. And this shit is one of them. Hugging his moms, even seeming concerned about trying to find Raheem's killer. The shit was chilling. Been asking around too. Nobody seemed to have seen or heard anything. Moving on to number one, Roland Bishop was really in ass covering mode, cause trying to kill Steel, the last friend he had left. At this point, let's keep it a buck. Steel was terrified. And then you, this cocksucker's an arch criminal. I mean, when I leave my house in the morning, before I get to the car, I'm looking over both shoulders. He was scared to death of Bishop. Just come down here, man. I'm scared as hell. He really ain't want nothing to do with him. Bishop also knew Steele wanted no part of him. Because Q and him dipped on Bishop last time he was pressed by Rodimus. Now, y'all at home might think the old man Quillis, Raheem, or even the Rodimus killing is worse. But nah, no way. He ain't cool, man. 100% premeditated. Meaning this brother really thought this shit out. See how scared you are? Don't you get tired of this shit? What the f you want from me? Those other three, in my opinion, was quick split second decisions. Plus what he did to steal really pissed us off. Taking her out to eat and have fun. For one, if I lose, I'm gonna beat that ass. For two, if I lose, I'm gonna beat that ass. It reminded me of someone on death row getting their final meal and shit. Smelling me some cornbread. Like, how could you do your boy like that? Leave him to die cold and alone just like you did Raheem. Super foul shit. Then to make matters even grimier, like I referenced in number two with the line, you try and pin this whole shit on Q. I don't know what's wrong with him. He ain't been acting like himself lately. I mean, it kind of hurt me because we've been best friends since we was in the second grade. Did you know that? The fact that you planned it out this way just highlighted your heartlessness. I mean, I could look out for myself, but... What he might do to steal? Man, I don't know what he might do to steal. I mean, look, y'all. It was time for Bishop's ass to get up out of here. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. Look, 
We all know Bishop ended up getting his just due at the end. Come on, Q, don't let me go! It might not have been enough, because honestly, his ass deserved way worse, but he did end up getting his. Maybe it was your time to lose. Because if you haven't heard, you got the juice now, man. Q has the juice now. Thanks, random person I've never met before. This movie's 31 years old and this character still gets under my skin. I am crazy. I am crazy. Anyway, y'all, get in the comment section. Let me know where he ranks on your all-time favorite villain list. And thank you, Tupac, for your contribution and making this character yours. Again, RIP to the God. And if you're still here and you haven't subscribed, one of y'all, I'm Big Rich. We'll see y'all next time.